yo, what is up? What is up, dude? How you guys doing? You guys doing good out there? I hope so. I hope you're doing good out there. We got a great video on deck for you guys today, and I am I'm very excited to bring it to you, by the way. And today we are going to be uh, checking out some OG caps. OG caps. Now, initially, I wanted to do a shootout, a shootout between some very popular thin tips. And then I started playing with the old school New York outline, and uh, I realized that, you know, these caps don't get enough shine on their own. So we're gonna go ahead and try and mount these on some modern cans, but first we'll need to do a little modification to them, and I will show you how to do that in this video, don't worry. I will show you how to do it. And um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how nice they spray. And remember, these are cheap caps. These are the cheapest caps you can get. So with a little modifications, you can have a very, very powerful tool at your disposal. Before we get started showing you how to shave these caps, uh, a couple people are probably gonna ask, well, how do they work on the Resto? So we're gonna go ahead and take a couple already modified caps, just like a cooking show, we already, we already have them done. We're gonna take them outside and show you how they spray. Um, <clears throat> you're not gonna get the huge spray as you would with a female can, and it's because of the design of the male stem. I have a narrow urethra, yes I do. This is my urethra. And uh, maybe someday we'll do a little diagram and I'll show you guys that, but basically, the female valve is far superior delivery system if you want that high pressure flow. So with that said, let's go out and try it out on the Rusto first because I think people want to see, a lot of people use these, and uh, I just happen to have a couple cans here. Yeah. This is a Sunrise Red with the Rusto adapter. And I gotta tell you, with this modified Rusto, this looks so much like a Rusto fat with the old valve. It's as close as you can get to the old valve Rusto with this modified cap. It looks fantastic. Good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and try the outline on the Canon Universal here. This is the New York outline with the Universal can, and it's just a little bit softer, and it's still fairly thick on the Rusto. I mean, you can get a flare here. Look at that, look at that beautiful flare. Um, but the line work is softer to the touch which is very nice. This is actually a really nice combo if you want to paint freights. You want to get some nice, nice clean outlines with your Rusto can. 20 cent cap right here, really, really cheap stuff. I gotta tell you guys, I really like these adapters with the New York outline. They work really well together and it looks a lot like the old school Rusto, it really does. Um, you know, again, I'd like to natively mount them. It would be a superior system and uh, much less prone to clogging the can, by the way. So anyways, why don't we go ahead and show you guys how to make one of these caps. So here's all you gotta do. You just take a very, very sharp razor blade and slightly shave off the little ridge that is running along the side of your Rusto Fat and New York Outline. And I think right now we're starting with the New York Outline. Yes, we are. Ah, there's the Rusto. Same technique, same stem, same everything. Just slowly shave along the side and rotate as you go. And when you're done, open up the notch on the Rusto for extra flow and you're done. All right, guys, we're all done. And as you can see, we've just barely, barely shaved off a little bit. This is the shaved one on the left and this is the stock Rusto fat on the right. You can see there's a tiny little ridge that goes along the side and we just shave that off. Just very, very slightly shave that off and we enlarged the hole, the stem slot. We made it a little bit bigger. That'll allow more paint to go through and much wider delivery. So why don't we go ahead and take these caps to the yard. I got a great little assortment of paint. I got some iron lac, I got some Molotov, uh, maybe some flame. We'll see what we got in the bag, but it's a nice mix. So All right, guys, it looks like we have some Storm's Purple Rain on deck and oh, 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 that is, that is lovely. That is really lovely. That's the Rusto Fat, the modified Rusto Fat with the Iron Lac. And it is very, very thick. All right, up next is Furious. And originally I was gonna do that as my top part of the fade, but yeah, you know how things go. Notice how small the opening is on the bottom of the S right there. I later change it and I, I will regret that actually. I will, I will regret that, uh, but that's the way the game goes. All right, up next is Punk. Wow. Now that is a fat spray, boys. That again is the modified Rusto Fat, and it is by far one of my favorite caps on the Iron Lac right now. If, oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that, look at that. I am doing some beat back with the Furious, and it's got like a really cool, um, 
oh, what would you call it? Like a vaporwave flare to it. So what's this right here? Is this the uh, Riviera, I think? That's the New York outline, by the way. Look how thin the lines I'm getting with that. Obviously not the best for filling, as you can see right here. So we'll switch it up. Yep, Rusto Fat. There we go, baby. Rusto Fat on the Molotov. Covers very, very nice. Now this this is a, what do you want to call it? A, uh, a very old fence that I primed with interior paint. So it's going to need at least three or four more murals on it before it really starts taking the paint well. You know how it is on these old fences. It just takes a few coats. Probably should have used exterior, but you know, oops paint. Oh my god, yeah, is that that cherry red? Yeah, that's... <laughs> It goes so well with the purples. And you know, I really should have left the, it like this, but I wanted to show you guys a technique coming up. So sometimes I have to force stuff in and it actually kind of ruined the piece, but you know, I gotta teach you guys this stuff and it's important that you learn these things. So we'll see that in a second, but if it were up to me, I would have just left it as is. And again, that's the New York outline right there. Oh, it's phenomenal. It's so good on these cans. Just a little shaveroo is all you gotta do. Just a little shaveroo. Man, it really pops off with that red and the purple and the pink. It's just phenomenal. Lingier, what's this? Oh yeah, Gesser Black Red. Now initially I was gonna do like some piano keys or something, but then I got all funky and do all these weird like Mayan symbols and shapes and stuff. <laughs> but I think it works. It looks good. I dig it. It's fun to do kind of weird things in the 3D. If you look at um, Blade, the OG writer Blade from the 70s, he did a lot of really funky stuff in his 3Ds. He'd do like stars and bubbles and weird like shapes and stuff. What's this? Oh yeah, this is, um, oh, what's that yellow called? Oh, I'll just put it down in the notes, I don't remember. But I will say this, this iron-like yellow, whatever it is, it reminds me a lot of golden yellow in the Molotov. And, and, and that's a good thing. That is really a good thing. I really do enjoy using it. Uh, very nice thick paint and uh, Look at that handsome guy. Look at that handsome guy. Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> now those are some nice shines right there. Look at that, no cutbacks. One line shine clean, baby. Get on that level. <laughs> hey, at least my shines are good, okay? <laughs> and that is the shock white from the, uh, the Montana. I, I really like that white, it's a great white. Good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and get our shines going here. All right, what next? Oh yeah, I didn't like this part. I thought it looked kind of gross. So I went ahead and just buffed it out. I, the problem was the opening on the S was too big. That was the problem. I should have left that and made the opening on the S smaller. Ah, stay la vie. What are you gonna do, guys? Just make another wall. That's all you gotta do is make another wall. Anyways, so here, here's the technique I wanted to show you guys. Now, this is uh, using fluorescent colors over darks. Is The thing is, is they don't hide very well. So whenever I use a fluorescent over darks, I like to take a white and make a base coat underneath it. That way, when you lay down your fluorescent, you have a nice, uh, you know, light surface for it to shine off of. And you can see right here, it made a really, really nice shine. And, you know, it doesn't look half bad looking at it now, but at the time, I just felt like it distracted from the fill. Um... Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about this character. As you can see, I'm kind of showing the lines of the basis of the character. And first, as always, we just do the white of the eyes and start outlining the character. And then we can kind of start working our fill colors here. And uh, it's looking pretty good already. I should have just left it like that. <laughs> I gotta show you guys these techniques, it's important. So anyways, as you can see, I have a upper line a vertical line going down and a horizontal line going across um, and two smaller lines that aren't very visible for the mouth and the nose. There's there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. We can talk about that at a later date. I'm more concerned about showing you guys how to fade your colors um, to create that you know more depth, in-depth look. But we're gonna do a very basic. We're not gonna do too much shading in this video. Uh, just so you can kind of get the basic technique here. So first I'm gonna start with my middle tone and just fill it all in. And uh, this is the iron lac color. I don't remember which shade this was. Sorry guys, I don't remember. Um, it's a nice shade of brown. Okay, and then the shirt, some Molotov color. I wanna say that is night scene blue. Pretty sure that's night scene blue. Yeah, I think it is. It's like that periwinkle type of blue. So yeah, I'm just kind of working in my, my fill colors right now. And uh, boy, you looking thick, boy. <laughs> It's the coveralls, man. It's the coveralls. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So anyways, go ahead and get your fill going in there. And uh, maybe we'll cut some of this out here because it's taking too long. You get the point, you get the point. All right, so now let's go ahead and start dusting in our darker color. And this is also an iron lac color and I don't have it in front of me, I apologize. It's one of their darker browns. It's chocolate or something like that. It's a beautiful shade of brown and looks really, really good for dusting in. And as you can see, I'm kind of just dusting it in very lightly. And this is all with the New York outline cap, by the way. And just kind of adding it into places where there might be some shadow. It's, you know, you're just kind of working your way around. Uh, don't, don't feel like it has to be perfect. If you don't like it, you could always go back in with the middle color and fix it. It's all good. Uh, eventually you'll want to work your highlight color on the opposite side of the shadow. Obviously there's some shadow on the other side too, uh, just to make it a little bit more dimensional. So anyways, we're just working in some of the shadow colors here, and then we'll move on to the highlights. Alright, so here's the highlight color, and generally when I do this type of stuff, I prefer to use a can that's almost empty because the pressure is almost all gone and you have a lot more control over it. This was actually a brand new can of that, I think it's like that sand white or whatever. It's way, way too much pressure as you can see right there. I got way too thick of a line. So, you know, there's a couple ways around this. You could also invert the can, let out some of the pressure, uh, but I was kind of in a hurry. Uh, this was on a Saturday and I was trying to get a bunch of stuff done. So of course I didn't bother. ADD will do that to you guys. Well, sometimes you're just too much of a hurry. But as you can see, you're just kind of working the, the lighter color around and opposite of the darker color. And then you'll come back with the middle tone to kind of blend them in together. And I think that's what I'm doing right here. Is this the middle tone right here? Let's see here. Oh, yep, yeah, there's the middle tone right there. So anyways, yeah, so I'm kind of creating a nice blend between the two with the middle shade. And it's just a little bit of back and forth. Uh, you could really spend a lot of time working on this. I didn't, because I'm just showing you a basic technique. Um, but you can get really detailed with the shadowing, that is for sure. We'll get more into that in the future, but right now we're just showing a basic technique and I think we'll just leave it at that. So anyways, let's move on to the next step. Oh, I guess we're all done. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now the piece came out really nice, although I'm, I am a little unhappy with the opening on the S. It's just, it's just a little too big, but you know, what, what can you do? Just move on to the next one. The K and the E and the R came out really nice. Uh, I use K and E's a lot, so that's understandable. And the R is just a version of the K. So those are kind of in my repertoire, if you will. The S, not so much. But the character came out good. We did a little halo around him. Someone asked me about doing halos and characters. I was like, eh, we'll just toss one in for the video. Definitely helps to clean things up. But that New York outline, look how clean those shines are. I love the New York outline. Definitely gonna be using it again. So let's move on to the ending. All right, guys, that was a lot of fun. We had a chance to try out the Rusto Fat with some modern paint, with some minor adjustments. And you can see he gets some very fat sprays. I mean, it looked like an Astro Fat. It was so fat. Amazing stuff. The New York outline, very fine tip. And let me put this over here real quick. Being a bad Boy Scout over there with my knife play. Uh, don't try that at home, kids. Don't try that at home. Uh, but I got to tell you, I'm very, very happy with how it sprayed on the modern cans. I mean, it was just beautiful flares very thick output with the Rusto Fat and the fine details of the New York outline. And it looked like that old school look that I'm looking for, the way the New York outline was meant to be. Beautiful stuff. And uh, it was a lot of fun to try this technique and maybe somebody learned something, you, you tried something new that you've never done before, or maybe you're revisiting this old cap that you've maybe thought was just a relic in the dustbin of history. Uh, but it's not, it, there is so much life left in these caps and I want people to use them. I actually consulted with somebody about this, uh, a gentleman who truly loves the old school New York outlines and he uses them for all his work. And uh, his name is Gesser. And if you don't know, his name is on that can of black red we were using. And uh, I'll put a link here, right here. So maybe here, somewhere around here. I'm gonna put a link for his, his Instagram account. And the guy's been painting for years and he's better than me that's for sure better than a lot of people and um he uses the new york outline almost exclusively for his outline tip does the shave and he was a little hesitant for me to share this technique with people because he wants people to figure these things out for themselves and i understand that you know i i totally feel that vibe uh but at the same time i think it's important that we share um we share some of these techniques with people so you can get a, f a foot ahead or a better starting point than what we started with when we were younger. You know, teach the young people 
uh, these techniques so they can get a leg up and maybe even be better than we were when we were their age. And, and it's true, a lot of them already are better than we were when we were their age. It's true. The kids are so good now. They really are. Um, and that's a good thing. Powerful. <laughs> Oh, one more thing. I would like to say thank you to Backwards Brew. Backwards Brew in the crew. Put him right here. Thank you for sending me this shirt. Give him a follow on Instagram. He's quite a designer and quite a graffiti writer and artist in general. So thank you very much for this shirt. It is very, very stylish. All my favorite things in one place. Beautiful. So anyways, guys, I got to get out of here. It's Friday night. We got to get this rave turned up, baby. Let's party town. Till next week. I'll see you then. All right. Oh, what was that? What, what, what was this for? Oh, yes. Artprimo.com. Artprimo.com. We're your number one source for all things graffiti related. Uh, markers, caps, ink, you name it, baby. We got it in the house right here in this warehouse that I'm existing in right now. 206-365-4083. That's artprimo.com. Number one source, baby. Peace.